Hey, my dear friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today we're up here on my favorite windy mountain road test driving, the 2021 AMG GT43 four-door coupe. This is the entry level for the AMG brand. So I'm gonna show it to you inside now. We're gonna take it for a drive and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. As always, before we get out on the drive, let's talk about what we've got here. This, as tested, prices out at $107,000 and some change. This is the base model, the GT43, starts out at $89,900, and this has a lot of options on it, about $17,000 worth, maybe a little bit more. So when we look at this car, the biggest thing to point out is it's about the exact same size, same architecture as the Mercedes-Benz E-Class sedan. Wheelbase is virtually identical. The length is slightly more because of the overhangs. Looking at the styling, very AMG exclusive. You've got the AMG grille, sort of a forward leaning profile to the front end, LED headlights, of course. Big lower jowls down in the lower front fascia, very aggressive in its style, but also larger for the intake for the turbocharged engine. Coming around the side, this comes standard with 19 inch wheels, but this has huge 21 inch wheels on it. Now they're wider too. 275 section front tires and 315 section rear tires and those really affect the handling. Looking through those wheels you can see some huge 14 inch disc brakes and coming down the side you can really see how long this car looks and that goes to the lines, it goes to the roof line and look at that roof line. Those windows seem to go on forever and they do. They stretch almost all the way back over the rear axle and that's because we have a full hatch back there that is power operated and there's a spoiler that electric spoiler does pop up once you get up to speed and you can raise it manually down in the lower fascia you can see some big quad exhaust tips that are just absolutely beautiful and very much like the gt coupe to which this is part of the family very slim horizontal led tail lamps there at the back i think this thing is just dead sexy All right, my friends, now it's time to take this car for a drive, and we're gonna start by talking about what's under the hood. This being the base model, the GT43, this has a three liter inline six turbocharged engine. This is also a mild hybrid. It has the EQ boost system, which has a 21 horsepower electric motor generator sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. And that allows us to operate somewhat as a mild hybrid, but Moreover, it really helps the auto start stop system be a lot more responsive than most. And because of that, the air conditioning system can stay on while the engine's off. One of my favorite features here. The engine's made it to a nine speed automatic transmission called AMG Speed Shift. And here it makes 362 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. Formatic all wheel drive is also part of the package here. So whenever I do my test drives, one of my favorite questions is how does it go? So we'll come to a complete stop here. Nobody around. And we are in sport mode. So here we go. Woo. Nice sound and 60. Woo. Mm. Listen to that, would you? This has an absolutely beautiful sound. It has a soul. It has a soul. And that's why I was so happy when Mercedes-Benz brought back the inline six. A V6 just doesn't have this kind of feel, the sound, and just uh, visceral pleasure. There's just no way around it. So power here is well more than adequate, even though we are in the base model. 362 horsepower is plenty, I would say. Now, obviously, if you want more, you can step up to the GT53 with 429 horsepower, more powerful version of the same engine, or you can go all the way up to the crazy V8s, well over 600 horsepower available there. And I've driven those. They're wonderful. They're great. But I'm very pleased here. I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed in these base powertrain offerings. I think really you get into this speed shift transmission, use these paddle shifters, and this thing really offers up a lot of visceral thrill. 
rev matching. It holds your gear when you're in corners and on the brakes. Listen to that. Oh. This is what you spend the money for, I'm telling you. I could do this all day long but I can't we have a video to finish so uh, plenty of power here it's revable it's fun it's refined it does have auto start stop which I really don't like but it's one of the better systems out there in that way now this is rated at 20 mpg city 25 mpg highway and 22 combined 22 is what I got with it this week before I came up here into the mountains and started going nutty with it. So I'm very impressed. This powertrain gets four and a half out of five stars. Now, handling. This has a multi-link front suspension, multi-link rear suspension, AMG ride control, which is adaptive dampers, and of course the aforementioned wider tires and wheels, 275 section front, 315 rear. Now what that gives us out here is amazing grip on these corners i can just toss it into a corner like a wet rag not even worrying about the brakes and i just know that this thing's going to do what i tell it and it's going to stick the steering is very sharp and very precise even though this has the wide tires on it which is impressive and this chassis is just so refined this is a stiff tight suspension that really gives it up in the way of grip and overall predictability and performance yet it's not harsh so that's very impressive. I did notice out on the freeway on a road trip that the directional stability isn't quite as good as we'd like. It tended to need a little bit of correction here and there to keep it going in a straight line more than I'd like. I attribute that to the fact that this does have pretty wide tires on it. So I'm very impressed with this chassis. It's a lot of fun to drive. It's well worth the money. It feels every bit worth the money. And that's saying a lot. This chassis gets five out of five stars. Well, that was fun. Now, the interior, you probably saw a little bit of this when we were driving. There's a lot going on here, and my review wouldn't be a good review if I didn't really talk about what they've done with this interior. Now, this is going to look very familiar if you sat in any one of the mid to full size Mercedes Benz vehicles in the last couple of years. The color combination in here is the Auburn Brown and Black Napa leather interior. The wood in here is a beautiful natural pour open grain black ash and it really goes nicely with the brown leather. The soft stitching goes across the dash, the doors, pretty much everywhere you run your hands and the quality of materials in the trim colors and the switch gear is just absolutely exquisite. It really literally is the best that money can buy in today's car market. Obviously, we are fully optioned here with so many things above and beyond the base price. Heated and ventilated seats. These seats, exceptionally comfortable, very supportive. AMG logo sport seats. You'd expect them not only to be comfortable, but to be very supportive and hold you tight like they did out there on the road. The steering wheel is an optional steering wheel with extra controls on it, thumb controls for the drive modes. There's also thumb controls on the spokes for your infotainment as well as what's on the instrument cluster in front of you. And that instrument cluster is a fully digital display that's customizable. There's several themes. There's so many different ways that you can change what you're looking at here. I can't, I can't go into all of them here. The center console is a unique console for the AMG four-door coupe. It has cup holders in the front center. There are USB ports and a 12 volt port down there. And back here you have some storage. It's not terribly large. It's large enough for your phone and maybe a couple pairs of sunglasses, a few things like that. It does have the double clamshell open. The gear selector here is a toggle. It's located sort of at the back and it's got a really beautiful logo stamped in the leather. Ahead of it is a touch pad for the infotainment system and controls on both sides of the wings, let's say here on the center console for the drive modes and things related to that. 
The climate controls are right at the front of the center console. One of the options here is a full glass moonroof, which on the outside is a single sheet of glass. Inside, it's actually divided up into two lights and the roll shades actually meet in the center, which is why it has that center post. While I mentioned the E-Class Mercedes-Benz sedan in the walk around, I will tell you that you know for sure you're not sitting in the back of one here. This is a coupe, this is a GT, and by that you can tell this is a four-seater. I've got two bucket seats back here. I do have a low seating position, but I, I'll say that this is actually quite comfortable. You're very well supported side to side. And the leg room, as you can see, I've got about four inches ahead of my knee. These seats are set for my height, about 5'8", and I've got about two inches above my head. So even though this does have a pretty slope roof line, I'm doing pretty good in the room department. The only deficit is that I, I kind of feel like I'm sitting down in a hole. There is a center console area here with two cup holders and a nice storage tray, two USB ports for charging your devices, air conditioner vents, which I'm using right now. That's why you hear the engine running. It's hot outside. Looking at the trunk space, because this has an opening hatch at the back, a GT Coupe, plenty of storage space, golf bags, suitcases, whatever you happen to need to put back there, there's plenty of room for it. And now these seats, they do not fold down, so you're not looking at a full load floor, but you can tell that there's plenty of space back there. And underneath that floor, a few little areas to store some things, but don't be looking for a spare because if you have the money for this car, well, you're not gonna get flats, right? When it comes to rating this interior, I really have to say simply that this is one of the best interiors in the business. When you sit in this car, when you drive this car, when you smell the leather and you touch all of the surfaces, you know you spent your money well. And if they've done that, if they've accomplished that, sense of feeling that you've spent your money well, I think you have a good interior. There's nothing in here that, that seems like it's less than the money spent. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is a fully optioned system, has the big large screen in the center, has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, although it is not wireless here. One of the things that's very important here is they have shrouded this and so it does have a good level of visibility even in direct sunlight. It is controllable by a touchpad down here on the center console as well as buttons and controls on the steering wheel. There's also a touch sensitive pad on the steering wheel. And you do have a couple of hard controls on the steering wheel volume in particular. I would complain about the fact that tuning stations and things like that still has to be done by swiping around on menus. I really always prefer a volume knob and a tuning knob for controls because if you're on a windy road like today, it's much easier to just reach over and click, click, click than it is to try to, you know, while you're turning and driving to be paging through menus and that sort of thing. These car companies really just need to get that through their heads. But outside of that, this absolutely sounds wonderful with a Burmester sound system. It has a 360 degree camera. It has multiple camera views forward and back, and it's just fully featured in almost every way. This system gets four and a half out of five stars. All right, my friends, now it's time to talk about value, which is always sort of a silly conversation, in my opinion, when we talk about a luxury car like this, because we're not comparing this thing to other vehicles with a spreadsheet like you might if you were buying a Toyota Corolla. I always like to point that out, that value is subjective, right? But when I look at the price on this, a base price of $89,000 and as tested price of 107, what that tells you is that there's a lot of options you really need to put on this car to get it to a point where it's as you see it. And the Germans stick it to you with the options pricing. I mean, you saw some of this floating across your screen as we talked about this car. Options prices are really up there and for things that you think would just come standard with a car like this. But I digress. Uh, that goes into our scoring for value. Now, warranty not the best in the business, not the worst, and quality, for the most part, very good. Some of the interior pieces in the back, I did get a little bit of rattle and squeak with those things, but uh, this is a car that's very well built. The interior really speaks to that, and we talked about that. I'm very impressed with this car overall. So I put value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we have a total review score of four and a half out of five stars. Very good. And you know what else? 
I like it well enough, I'd put it on my I'd buy it list, which is to say if I were buying a four-door coupe luxury grand tour, I would totally buy this. In fact, I like this color. I love the interior color. I would almost really get it just like this, except that I might go up to the GT53. I love this inline six. I love the sound, the feel, the power. I'd want just a little bit more, go up to the more powerful version. Um, the V8's great, but I, I don't know if I'd go all the way there, especially around here on, on tight roads like this. That's that big V8 engine with the turbo, that, uh, that's like quail hunting with a bazooka up here. Uh, this is just enough engine to make it fun and manageable. Just, just my opinion, but there you go. I like it, so there you go. If you like the review you just saw, I invite you to see our latest one right there, or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel right down there, and we'll keep you informed of everything we do. Stay tuned.